the Big Five O. This is Clash of the Podcast, hosted by Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. Sean Hubbard, right over here next to me. You also have Conrad Cushman representing everything pro wrestling. And every time we come together, it is Clash of the Podcast live every single Monday at 6.05 Eastern Standard Time. You should know the time by now. You should know where you need to be. This is the new mothership of wrestling podcast. So you need to be here, baby, if you will. You need to be here for us. All right? So make sure you guys keep it locked here with uh, everything that we do. We're going to be talking a little bit of the bloodline. Surprise, surprise. We're going to talk a little AEW all in. What's going on with that? Uh, We're going to talk about Marty Jannetty in a little throwback segment. We had a Dark Side of the Ring special on him last week. We're going to be talking about that. Um, uh, uh, is there something else? Conrad, drop that thing. Best place to be on a Monday before Raw. We are here. Um, getting ready to talk a little pro wrestling, man. Uh, Sean, how are things your way, brother? Everything is well, man. Happy to be here. Um, tired, but that's part for the course for a Monday, and uh, just just pushing, man. But it's never a, it's never a press to come and do the show with you, my G. Always fun. The chat's in full effect, man. You know. They've been blessing me with DMs all week, you know what I'm saying? Guy and, um, you know, McKinney and uh, it, it just continues to be a, a lot of love. Joel, of course, and Lizzy for Sheezy, Derek, it's a blessing, man. Jocelyn, it's a blessing, man. Good to be here. I'm going to go through everyone's comments here momentarily. Um, guys, easiest way to support Clash of the Podcast, many, many different ways. Number one, hitting the subscri- subscribe button on Everything Pro Wrestling. We've been slowly climbing this year, a lot of movement. So thank you for that. Keep it up. Also, go over to Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. I've been over there. I'm going to be over there again in the future. You need to be over there. So when Sean makes his announcements for his podcast, you get something special. You get something a little different than you get over here. But it's always good, fun, talking wrestling. So make sure you guys do that. Like button. Yo, free. I don't ask you for nothing else. Hit the like. That's it. It helps more people see us in the algorithm. Leave us comments after. I love reading them. I know E always leaves some. Uh, Ray Thompson, Cray. A bunch of people always leave us good comments, and those are also appreciated. I love seeing those. If you got a really, really good one, I'll pin it to the top. Last week, Sean got pinned to the top. But... You guys put a good comment in there. I'll pin it to the top. And uh, I love talking wrestling with you guys. So easy ways to do that, man. Just make sure you guys are supporting, retweeting, sharing on Facebook, wherever you can. Appreciate it. Most definitely. Let's get to it. Quills, first one in the house. Quills is not beaten on on Mondays. He's always in here first. What up, Conrad, Sean, chat, episode 50. Of Clash of the Podcast, your boy Sir Quills is here for this monumental episode of the dopest wrestling podcast in the game. Congrats, my guys. Let's get into it. Quills, always a pleasure, my G. Appreciate you. Jocelyn says, J Uso to AEW. Now listen, trying to get me and Rob in trouble. We we definitely have put up uh, something with that. Uh, if you guys want, you can go look on TikTok. You can go look on Twitter. I just know people weren't happy with me. It's a joke, my peeps. It's a. It said it was a joke on the TikTok, and people still left bad comments. I'm like, it's a joke. Take it easy, guys. Right? Take it easy. Um, Got to make sure y'all know, Sean always leaves a little message for you guys. It's kind of a ritual now because I'm always out getting my water at the last second and stuff. So he always blesses you guys with a nice comment in there. Guy Will Gamble says, yep, what's good, fellas? Catching the early part of the show while I set up my poker stream. Jay did what most people want to do at their jobs. Facts. Facts. And good luck with with the poker stream. That's awesome. That's a fact. You know, I said the same thing, Guy Will Gamble, when I was in Toronto for uh, Forbidden Door, when people booed CM Punk. You know, I said, why are you booing him? He's right. 
<laughs> and, and everybody stared at me, and I don't care. I said, "You when Stone Cold did it, you, it was cool. When it happens in real life, how how could you? How <laughs> dare you?" <laughs> Joel says, "What up, guys? What's good, Joel?" Joel, appreciate you. M. Leezy, Fo, Sheezy. What up, though? Let me see if I can do the Derek with this. I can't make my fingers tap. I got big hands. Hello, good evening, everyone. Happy to stop by the best podcast to start off the week. I love it. Derek's in the house. Derek, we're not even talking right now because I just told you you got Zeke. What are they doing for my football team? My what God. Are Derek? My what God. are we doing? What are we doing? No, no, no. There ain't none. There ain't no love for him. What are they doing to my Buffalo Bills? Let's add Aaron Rodgers to the division. Why don't the Bills ever have a championship? It's no wonder, people. You come into this division to beat up my team. I'm tired of it. It's getting real old, all right? There's plenty of other doo-doo divisions you could have went into. Get your little 14 wins you need to get in the playoffs. And you could have been off to the races. But no, you're like, you know, let's go into Buffalo. Let's mess them up, you know? Let's see. Let's see. If we can make someone 11, 11 win team, and they have to play for a wild card round. Yeah, let's do that. Get out of here. I'm tired of this. Nothing bad better happen to the Bills this season. I'm tired meanwhile, of it. Meanwhile, my Giants are looking pretty good. Hey, hey, you're welcome for the coach. I appreciate that. All right, all right. I we'll see what they do. They they kind of impressed me last season. I hope you guys are still on a good run. Uh, this Monday early evening raw. <laughs> Is that what you call us? Early evening raw. I like that. I like that. I like that shirt, Hub. Let's see oh, it. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jocelyn. Yeah, this is my I'm a vibe t-shirt. On a, available on the Hubby Wrestling Key store in T Public. So if you like it, go cop one. But yeah, Jocelyn, appreciate that. Very kind coming from you. Much appreciated. I like Connor Con- knows I like to combine um pro wrestling with with swag and the culture. So gotta wear something that looks good outside in the streets. Yeah. Original Biggie on Twitch says, good evening, Conrad Sean. Hope y'all are doing good. Hope the chat is doing well. Thank you. Andrade is in the chat. Andrade, welcome. Welcome. Uh, I, I hope we can say your name right. Seems like a lot of announcers have trouble with that. It's El Idilo, though, all right? I know a lot of people have a hard time, or they may just call you Andre. You know, I get it. Andrade. Conrad, can you stay out of drama for five seconds? Hey. Hey, it's what it is, man. We'll get into that. Yo, I'm here to talk wrestling and let y'all know today's episode is brought to you by Blood Pressure Pills and Popcorn because it's going to be a rant. Let's go. McKinney, McKinney, I'll be honest with you, bro. You've seen me on social media. We've been interacting on Instagram. I'm chilling, bro. After what happened last week at SummerSlam, I, first of all, y'all know I've already tapped out anyway, right? I did not watch SmackDown or Raw live. I will not be watching SmackDown or Raw again this week, right? I hear about it, and I do my research out of respect for my tag team partner and friend, Conrad, and out of respect for you guys wonderful in the chat. That's why I do my research. WWE is, I'm done. There's not going to really probably be any rants, McKinney, and everybody who's, I mean, I know my rants are pretty entertaining, but (laughs) it's not going to really go down like that. This is what this is what I'm done looks like. <laughs> You'll see, man. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. You just give me some time, y'all. I gotta wait for the right opening. I was just watching. I never watched Balboa until yesterday. The first time I saw that uh, the film. Yeah, I know. I'm bad. I'm bad. But as soon as he leaves that gut open on the side, <sighs> one right there. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him to go off about something. Um, CM sending their blanks home. I will get into that momentarily. And I, I got the Dukes up, but I might surprise some of you tonight. Really? Oh, you mean God. Monday night? Meh. <laughs> Original piggy. Uh, some people call it Rawful. <laughs> uh, Vinny says, sup, guys. God bless y'all as always. What up, Vinny? Much Vinny. appreciated. Vinny. Big shout out to BJ. BJ says happy Monday, y'all. Uh, love BJ. Me and BJ were having a good conversation today too on the uh, in the messages. Much BJ, appreciated, hold brother. As well, hold on as well. M thoughts and prayers again. Yes, very very true. Salute, salute. Yeah, uh, big shout out to Tony Khan too for changing his show around to donate the money to Hawaii because he said that they need it right now. He kind of reworked his uh, booking schedule a little bit for them, so I thought that was pretty cool. 
Uh, Doug, hey, yo, going to AEW shows and WWE shows are like apples and oranges. Glad I like both. Which one did you which one did you enjoy more or what what did you enjoy about them and what didn't you enjoy about them, Doug? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I'll, I'll randomly get into that in the show once you post it. My guy Hubs. My guy Derek. Original Biggie said the Bills are who they thought they were. I don't know what that means, Biggie. I'ma let that rock. I'm gonna let oh, it rock. They may not help us out, bro. Zeke might not make changes. Well, yeah. We'll see. Awesome shirt, Sean. Your shirt and Conrad's flexing is top level. <laughs> I'm rocking an old shirt, man. I just came home from the gym, and I do not feel like putting on anything remotely like warm. I was not thinking about swag today. The blind side was a lot. Yo, who you tell? You read that story today, Sean? It's a tragedy in my book because that story really tugged on my heartstrings. And to hear that it's a lie, good Lord. And my girl Sandra Bullock in the movie, man. I can't even look at that movie the same again. Mm-mm-mm. Terrible. Terrible. My man, Backstory Battle League. My guys, what's good? Yo, appreciate you, bro. What's happening? <laughs> Derek, I hate when me and Derek talk boxing. I'm going to kill them ribs. <laughs> oh, let's do FTI versus the Bucks. Uh, good idea. You know what to say, Sean. You know what that uh, I'll get you know, that. That's, but see, I gotta, I'm trying to. That's not really a. Um, that's not an AEW thing. Are we starting to get to that point where AEW deserves it? That's what that means? Is that what we're starting to do right now? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I do have different beefs with them, though, but we'll okay. get into that. Because we'll, if, start, listen, if the whole wrestling world deserves a, you know what that means, then we're in trouble. Uh, New New Japan has those moments lately too, though. Yeah, I heard. I, I always tell people, ghetto ghetto ninety five percent great Booker, but when that five percent kicks in, mm. bro, that five percent is in. What are you doing? McKinney said, "How about them Lions? Um, They're gonna be see? good this year. They're gonna be good, but they but you can't trust. You can never, and this is no shade at all. You can never trust the Lions. Anytime you see a silver helmet with a lion on it, and I'm being I'm talking about." In my opinion, I don't care about any other running back. I give respect where respect is due to people like um, Walter Payton, God rest his soul, to people like, you know, LaDainian Tomlinson. But to me, Barry Sanders is the greatest running back ever. And the fact that they never won a championship or got the pieces around him to win, I will always be suspect when it comes to the Detroit Lions. So, McKinney, no shot at you. One of my friends... We, we would always trade some jokes back and forth. I won't say who, because I, I actually think he's involved in the world of wrestling now, so I won't say too much. But he uh, we used to have a joke. He's from that area, and he was a Lions fan. And I always used to send him, if you ever seen uh, Lion King, when when they're holding the uh, Mufasa over the edge and with the Lions helmet logo, I always send him that. I'm like, is this your team, bro? <laughs> and so every time I think of the Lions, I think of that. Um Matt Lopez, I love that movie, The Blind Side. Yeah, man, that sucks. That sucks if true. Uh, AEW is more intimate feeling. WWE has its pr- on has it on production. Hard to explain in two hundred characters. Yeah, interesting. Evil again. Yeah, boy. <laughs> evil. Evil's that five percent I'm talking about. They love force and evil. Uh, I had more fun Wednesday because my section was on fire, Doug says. that Sometimes that matters, too. That 5% kicking in saying, how you doing? <laughs> mm, mm. Oh, Original Biggie has a new one for us. DTD, don't trust Detroit. Original Biggie with a nice one. Uh, but the shows weren't better than SummerSlam. Okay. Well, that pay-per-view, too. I mean, you should deliver on the PPVs, I would hope, right? Yeah, you would hope so. That's how we feel. Doug, welcome, by the way. Oh. Sean, everybody who's in here, like I said, hit that like button, boost us up. Let's talk, Sean. Let's talk, my brother. Let's get back into this because this was the talk of the town on SmackDown. And we're going to, we can kind of gloss over everything with SmackDown, but let's talk about the Usos first here. Uh, Lots happened in this show where they had the ceremony where I guess. Jay was supposed to bow down to Roman. Did I? Am I under? Yo, yo. Okay, let me explain a little frustration with this for me, just a little. Right. What are we That's doing? Going, I, I want to hear. No. no, why? Why do I not know what's happening with things? Like I thought he was supposed to like bow down to him because of the 
the the matchup that they have. I don't know why you think you're off, bro. You're 100 percent accurate in what you're saying. <laughs> so so Jay never really bowed or did anything. He was just like, yeah, I ain't with that. And uh, Roman comes out. He's just laughing at him, and Roman's just being the older cousin, whatever. Like I, I don't get what's happening with some of this. And I saw people trying to make sense of many things. I'm gonna talk about two other segments on the show too, Sean, because I want just so we can mix up the combo for once. Conrad, but, have fun, bro. We're outside. No, inside, outside, no, no, no. Oh, no. This isn't gonna be fun. This oh. is gonna be this is gonna be oh, me okay. tearing something down. Okay. Or at least laughing at it or getting your thoughts on it. Sean, what did you think of this whole, like, can they rehab this for you? Because you were way more invested in this than me. Like, the, the chat can see it clearly. Yeah. Like, how do you rehab this thing for you? I, I actually think the disappointment that I felt and the way that and the, the mannerisms that I'm portraying right now are better for my analytical abilities. Because <laughs> now I'm able to talk, to talk to you from a much less emotional standpoint. Um, I, I think that um, they dropped the ball on Jay. Um, and I think that when they dropped the ball on Jay, they had to do something. This is me trying to get into their brains a little bit. I don't speak idiot, so it's going to be difficult for me, but I'll try and get into their brains. Um, I think the logic was because the fans want Jay to win, at least 50-50, I think. Um, and the 50 that didn't want Jay to win, by the way, Conrad, were just people like you who were just saying it's not that we don't want Jay to win. We just think Roman keeping the title makes more sense. So it wasn't any – I don't think there was anybody against Jay Uso, right? So what they had to do was they had to figure out, okay, so listen, how can we justify Jay not winning this championship? We can say that Sammy not winning is just because Sammy's not as good. But people have really gotten behind Jay almost arguably more than they've gotten behind Sammy. That is debatable. So what can we do? We have to figure out something to make it so that Jay losing makes sense and then keeps us invested as a fan to the point where we still have something to cheer Jay for after his quest for the title has gone unfulfilled, right? Because after SummerSlam, the quest for the championship is over. You don't get the impression, or at least before SmackDown, before the ridiculousness happened on SmackDown, I didn't, even after the one, two, three got hit, I didn't get have any kind of indication in my mind that Jay was going to be on this three to six month quest to become champion, right? I thought SummerSlam was going to be either hit or miss. So now what we have to do is we have to regroup and we have to say, what can we do to keep people behind Jay and move him away from the championship? So they decide to turn Jimmy on Jay. That was the worst thing they could possibly do. The problem, the problem is you have an unstoppable force in Roman Reigns who's not really unstoppable. He just gets help every time he defends the title. People don't realize that what WWE is doing is they're actually chopping Roman Reigns down. Roman Reigns hasn't had a clean win, and I don't know when. And Roman Reigns should have, in my opinion, and I, I can't believe I'm saying this. This will prove that I'm actually on a regular emotional wavelength today. <laughs> Roman Reigns and Jey Uso should have had a hard-fought, no-holds-barred match, and Roman Reigns should have won clean. That's what should have happened. And had that have happened, everything would still be status quo. The Usos would still be intact. Roman Reigns would still be champion. He would have gotten a clean win over his cousin. He would have been the undisputed champion and undisputed tribal chief. But to answer your question, the answer is nothing. It's over. The, as it relates to the level of excitement and the level of anticipation that we reached and that crescendo that we reached at Money in the Bank, we will not reach that again. It's over. And it's unfortunate because now what they're doing is they're picking for straws. And if I were, and I'm going to kick it back to you, if I were a betting man, I would say that Jimmy and Jay, neither of them, and probably even Roman Reigns, were at all happy with the decision to turn Jimmy on Jay. We all know the story about how they want to write, face each other at WrestleMania one day. It didn't have to be WrestleMania 40. And by the way, and I'm really going to kick it back to you right after this comment, how stupid are you as the number one wrestling company in the world to book Jay versus Jimmy WrestleMania 40 right after they had that interview. How predictable 
and how gullible are you to make that decision right now? Everybody knows that interview is fresh in everybody's mind. So what you're going to do is you're going to follow behind the interview and book Jimmy versus Jay. It's ridiculous. It's pointless. And from a very objective perspective, I think the best of the bloodline is behind us. And I don't think there's anything they can do to recover. I respect, I respect that. that. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it's getting, getting hard out here with this whole uh, bloodline storyline. Like, why on earth? I just feel like you didn't need to break the Usos up to do this match. No, you didn't. But WWE always feels that that in their blood. What if you just did a storyline where these two fail their conquest to become tag team champs, and then Jay's like, you know what? Let's do something we always wanted to do as kids. I've been main eventing. I've been crushing it. I want this one thing. Adam Pierce, get out here. Adam Pierce comes out. He says, hey, I want to match with my brother. I always told him when we were kids we'd have this match. We don't. Have, we can't get the tag titles. Roman's tied up. Let me and my brother have a match. You could have just did it like that one time. Boom, it's done. But instead, we're going to go with this long storyline that I haven't really seen work or people feel since. I'm trying to think of the last good brother versus brother like match at Mania. Matt versus Jeff. Not even. I'd say Undertaker. I didn't like Matt and Jeff, really. And Undertaker, Kane's kayfabe. Brett and Owens, the greatest. You're never going to top that. Agreed. That's easily the best story. WrestleMania 10 was, I still say, the greatest opening match in WrestleMania history. I agree. Same, bro. Preach. Like, same thing, man. Like, I agree. That's uh, one of the best ways to open up the show. And it told a story throughout the show. Um, at the end of the segment, Jay Uso decides to throw up the peace sign. He says, I'm out of here, and I'm out of the bloodline, and I'm out of the WWE. He throws up the deuces, ooses, and he is in the crowd looking back. He super kicked Jimmy, knocked Jimmy down on his tail, making sure Jimmy knew, be better, be better, bro. And uh, right after, you started seeing graphics pop up. I won't put mine up, but I will put this one up because this is what made me laugh, too. Josh Fatu is... We put Joshua fought too as all elite. I mean, listen, I don't I don't know what else people want from this. Um, I, I don't know if they're gonna be able to recover. I don't know what the thing is for Survivor series this year. I, what are we doing? I like let me let me pose this question to you into the chat as well. I won't say I took heat. I don't think you gave me heat. I don't even think the chat gave me heat. I think they all were just everybody was just trying to calm me down for the past six months. <laughs> but my question is this, this is a much more somber, not even somber, somber is a negative word, a much calmer, rational Sean Hubbard, right? My question is simply this, my brother, had things gone the way I wanted them to go, whether it had been at Royal Rumble, in my opinion, the hottest, uh, the hottest, uh, Fire would have been uh, Elimination Chamber, Backlash, or SummerSlam. Had things gone the way I went, wanted them to go, and Jay had been able to topple Roman Reigns, as business savvy as you have shown yourself to be, and actually your business savvy is what got me off the ledge and got me to realize that Jay would never win this match at SummerSlam, but my question is this, had things gone the way I wanted them to go, wouldn't that have been better than what we have now? Creatively, possibly, but business savvy Conrad with risk and assessment, as, as I've mentioned before, I don't want to beat up the dude for a mistake, but I think that will always play a part in management's role in why can't we do this? Well, we can't do this because blah, 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 blah. That'll always work against him when someone has to come up with a reason why not to do it for Jay Uso. And I think sometimes when you're part of the greatest tag team, that's how you're seen. And it's hard to become like a Scott Steiner out of it. Does that make sense? Like compared to Rick, the Steiner brothers, great tag team. People still talk about them to this day. But 
how do you become the one that breaks away from long-term tagging when you're one of you know what i mean like could, did you think the dudley boys ever successfully really did it no or do you uh, still think of them as the dudleys no they did not um bubba had a hardcore run which was okay but no they were never but well I mean, let, me, let me stop bubba TNA. Uh, yeah in tna he did actually really well um so I get, but I mean, do we want Jay Uso to really move on to a different company? The companies that are together or separate? The Usos are better together, but the Usos can be like the New Day and be in I, I said the Hardys, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said the New Day. Um, I mean, the uh, Usos. Are the Hardys better together than a... I think they're equally successful together. Uh, no, that's wrong. That's just factually incorrect. They are way better together. Let me start right there. But they have been very, very successful on their own. So let me let me put it like this. I think Jay would be a Jeff Hardy type of situation to where they don't trust you. Mm-hmm. Jeff's never been trusted. I'm sorry, y'all. I was there when he won the title at Armageddon. I was I loved it. I was like, yes, good for Jeff. I'm happy for him. Blah 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 at the time. But then, how many weeks did he hold the belt for? Two, three weeks, oh. and he lost it right away. Doesn't matter. They never trusted That's him the with the title. That's the part that we never agreed on, bro. You 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 think that this whole idea of transitional champion is a bad thing? I don't. It's not. But what I'm saying is, you have to find a way to keep them there. They they found a way with Jeff, but I don't know if they were gonna put that much in to Jay Uso because then Jimmy's sitting here like, well, what happens to me? You know what I mean? What 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 becomes of Jimmy Uso? What's he is he gonna tag with Solo? What's you know? Is he a single star himself? I think they both have the potential. I don't know. I think Jay has separated himself to be a little bit better. But I think in a situation like this, Jimmy or Jay could flourish. And it's really a shame that we're not going to see either one. I mean, the only thing, we were talking about this in pre-production, the only thing that would get Jay back to where he was is if Jay, if they hold him off all the way to the Royal Rumble and then Jay wins the Royal Rumble. But that's not going to happen. So... I mean, th- this is my biggest fear, Conrad. We have come full circle, and Jay will never be world champion. When Jay was as hot, when Jay was as hot as anybody that could have ever been world champion. So, you know the difference when Jeff did it versus Jay, though, they're anchored to this storyline. They have put all their eggs into that basket for the most part. I mean, they've got them spread out with LA Knight and a few others, right, Chat? But when you put all those eggs into one basket, could be disastrous if you don't follow through. And now, technically, Roman's hurt, too. We talk about Jay being hurt. Oh, that was pre-production as well. Jay, Jay Uso's rumored to have, like, a wrist problem. And Roman is injured as well. But he, should, he shouldn't miss any time from the time he had already had to have scheduled off. But you have to be careful with that because Roman goes down, cash cow is done. It's over. I don't. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I could come at it from a different perspective now because it's over. But you know, to me, I think they dropped the ball, and I think now I'm kind of used to them dropping the ball, so it doesn't affect me as much. Um, the bloodline. You know what? It's funny. I, I think I could put a stamp on the bloodline in this statement. I think the bloodline will go down in history as one of the greatest storylines ever. That could have been way better than it ended up being. Because as great as it is, it could have been better. And it is what it is. I mean, it's a shame. It's a shame. Jay Uso is world championship material. I don't care what anybody says. Um, and I think that, and I think in their heart of hearts that if you ask any of them behind the scenes, Jimmy, Jay, Roman, Solo, Paul, they would all say, yeah, Jimmy can be the guy. At least for a short time, Jimmy. I mean, Jay. Did I say Jimmy? I meant to say Jay. Jay could be the guy. Why not? There's nothing. Jay was super over, bro. Super over. Like over, yeah. over, over, like Rover, over. <laughs> you know, it's like you know. But it is what it is. So now the question is, how do we revive it? Well, nobody's on TV now, so it's gonna be. It's gonna have to be you know on life support with Paul Heyman, Jimmy Uso, and Solo Sokol. And is that enough? No, because you know what I was meaning to tell you? This is something that really excites me because I have in my mind how I felt the summer slam, a dream scenario about a SummerSlam man, match should, act, should end. What do you want me to share with you? Go ahead. 
there's a way that you could have had Jimmy, that Jay could have won the championship, and Roman still looked strong. How many people do you think, roughly, just give me a ballpark figure of how many people Roman Reigns has done dirty during this championship run? I don't know, 13, 14? Yeah, Storyline wise, right? You have, yeah. you have Drew McIntyre, you have KO, Sammy, obviously, Jim, Finn. Finn Balor. How cool would it have been to see all those people that Roman Reigns had done dirty over the past three years? come out and take a shot at Roman Reigns and then Jimmy and then Jack keeps saying Jimmy and Jay jump off the top rope hit him with the splash and win tell right me, after that crossroads tell me, <laughs> tell me how tell me how crazy that crowd would have been tell me how I don't think that crowd would have been like just let me paint a picture let me give you a cinematic scene in your minds right Roman throws Jay over the top rope and Jay's recovering on the outside. So Roman's back is to the entrance with. Crowd's going crazy. Roman knows they're not cheering for him. They turn around and when he turns around, he sees Sammy Owens, Sammy, uh, Sammy Zane, Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre, Jimmy Uso, and whoever else standing behind. And they all beat the crap out of him. And then Jay hits him with the splash and wins the title. Are you telling me that's not epic? That's freaking epic. I well, some will argue oh, it makes Jay look weak because he needed that much help. But, just, but that's okay. The underdog is it's that's what people forget, Conrad. And I know you get this, but some people forget it's okay for the underdog to look weak. That's why he's the underdog. We all know that Jay can't beat Roman Reigns straight up one on one. We know that. But it, but did, did did Mick Foley didn't Mick Foley need help to win his first championship? They were cheating Foley bad. They they were cheating like the corporation was all out there stopping but him. Like, he was like, come on. But I mean, but even so, like, did Mick Foley win the championship on his own, or did he win because of Stone Cold hitting the Rock in the head with a chair? DX and Stone Cold even the odds that night. I mean, so I'm just saying, but we can move on. I'm just saying, I'm cool with it now. It's what it is. It's it's how you present it. Let's go to the chat. I want to see what the chat yeah. had to say about this, and then we'll get some quick other SmackDown thoughts. Uh, do you think Jimmy and Jay will deliver the same way Jeff and Matt did? I assume we're talking WrestleMania 25, Five. I think it was. Yeah, I think Jimmy and Jay will be better than that match. That's me talking, though. I think so, too. I think they're better, they're better storytellers in the ring. Yeah. Uh, Vinny says Jimmy was supposed to bow down, I think. I think they didn't clarify any of this, and I think they're just flying by the seat of their pants right now. Yep. Uh, McKinney goes into, first, if you love me, bro. So Jimmy said he stopped Jay from doing it because he loves him and he didn't want him to become corrupted as the tribal chief. I smell BS for all of this. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Not feeling it. Uh, BJ, we will come to that once it is time to uh, discuss for the uh, the update, I appreciate it, good sir. Second, glad they didn't do the jealousy card, but that super kick is my favorite now uh, over Jay Kick and Sammy. Uh, Jay stressed the hell out. His cousin disrespected him. His older brother costing him the title, and his baby brother just keep putting his hands on him. That man about to have a mental break. Mm. That explanation would have been good if Jay showed signs that he would have uh, went down the same path as Roman if he won, plus Jimmy couldn't have uh, called his brother. Like, I, yeah, I don't know with some of that stuff. They tried something different. Matt and Jeff should have been longer at 25. Just when it got good, it was over. The next time we see Jay, he better return with the elders or his dad at payback in the ring, main event, tribal combat, but they're milking it this and starting to run it dry. Uh, if he's actually leaving, he'll go to Impact, not AEW. <laughs> What's Joshua Fatu doing in the Impact Zone? I tweeted that. If Jay won, I'll watch their product again. And the tweet said nothing about positive comments. Or the tweet say nothing but positive comments. <laughs> I think Jay as champion would have led to a lot of creative stuff for it. Yeah, um, I, I think M. Leezy's the only person feeling me right now, bro. Like, I I don't know, man. I love Soraya. I love you, but mayo and pizza, I don't even want to know what that is. <laughs> Jeff is doo-doo. <laughs> From uh, Casey... McKinney says Matt needs Jeff, but Jeff wasn't trustworthy. 
Jeff was rustier than RVD on Wednesday. Hold on now. RVD did pretty good, I think. RVD looked better than uh, his days in Impact, I thought. R- RVD should not be. It's over. He should he shouldn't be doing that that kick, but when he bl- when he blasted Jungle Boy, I was like, oh, he could still he could still move a little. I just don't think he should be doing something. Like that. It wasn't a train wreck, no. Yeah, you could just tell. Listen, it's hard when you watch a wrestler when you see like the the slight decline. It's not like it's like oh he can't do it. It's just like oh I'm starting to notice that that jumps a little bit harder. That that moves a little. It's it's rough to watch. I get it. I agree. The best Jeff Hardy years were 2002 to 2003. His initial run, ooh, I don't, yeah, Jeff, that, that that was some weird times for Jeff. I remember when they teased the heel turn with Sean. Jay is better than Jimmy. Jimmy, to me, is the one with the real problem. So at the end of the day, without Jay, Jimmy wouldn't have a job. He's uh, babysitting his older brother. That I mean, that's not fair to Jimmy, though. He was injured, and then Jay got an opportunity. He just right place, right time. Usually, they keep uh, both partners off TV. Jay was just in the lucky position that they found some way to make it work. Yeah. What up, Tokyo? Tokyo. Uh, Six said, Jay ain't ready. Neither is Jimmy. Need to super kick those demons first. Woo. That This is a lumberjack match because that's many people interfering in a match. Seems seem believable in my – oh, don't seem believable in my opinion, respectfully. I, that's a lot. Well, and you got to have a lot of people turn. Like, if you had Finn out there, it depends on who's heel, who's face. Well, maybe, but well, maybe not Finn, right? Like, I think you're right. I mean, only the face people. Like, I mean, it could have been just kept saying let, – let me ask you this. Let's just do – let's Drew, Sammy, and, and KO. Would that have been, been – would that have been too unrealistic? Not at the time, but – you. You got Drew who's focused on other things. Are we going to see Drew again after that L? You know what I mean? Like, if you have him pop up, uh, Roman needs help with every match. But, hey, that's how Roman's treated, too. You think Rikishi will be a part of Jimmy versus Jay? I think Rikishi let the cat out the bag too early. I hope they don't change plans. I don't know if you saw the tweet that he had up the picture, like, special guest ref. Yeah. Uh, you can picture it now. Reminds me of Mankind winning the belt or Randy Orton. Uh you're bringing up all the sad moments, original Biggie. Sad times. RVD definitely looked better than an impact. I agree with uh, E. I think RVD looked a lot better. Uh, do you think they should add new family members to the bloodline? I mean, I don't at this point, point. At this point you kind of need it because everybody's going off the scene. I, I don't know, though, because they're going to – you know where this is, right? Like it's the, it's the Cody thing. I'm used to Hubbard's chaos. When you're disappointed, you don't care. I live uh, through this from you in the tweets. Okay, <laughs> I, I I I have to understand that's reality. That's true. Like Jacob Fatu, I I would love to see Jacob Fatu brought in, but I don't know. I've heard some stuff like there's a reason why they can't bring him in. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to say or yeah, I don't want to speculate. Uh, you think AJ Styles gets a title program with Roman? No. I think AJ's done, too. But let's get – speaking of that, that's a good transition. Thank you for that. I want to talk about two other things real quick. Number one, number one, I got to find this for you, Sean, so I can read this to you first right. and foremost. With uh, This concerns Karrion Cross. Who? Karrion Cross. Who? Come on now. Just saying. I was about to. I was about to start saying Mike Jones. If you kept doing that to me, yeah, I like that. That's Mike all. Mike Jones, two eight one three three zero 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 four. A lot of the youngins don't know what we're even talking about right that there. Man, they did warn me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. Tell them. Tell them. All right, Karrion Cross. So I found this online. I had to get your just. I just want your immediate reaction to this. Sure. There has been a trend in Karrion Cross feuds where he has promised to take away something near to his opponent, and he has followed through on every single one of them. He put the hourglass in front of the bloodline. A year later, the bloodline is no more. He promised to take Drew McIntyre's temperament away, and he would later have no issue showing his friend she- throwing his friend Sheamus under the bus. He promised to take away Mad Cat Moss' joy, and he is no longer Mad Cat Moss, making jokes and being silly. He's just Riddick Moss again. He promised to take away Rey Mysterio's patient. He'd go on to finally hit Dominic the next week. He promised to take away Shinsuke Nakamura's honor, who has now established himself as a heel. While Cross isn't winning all of these feuds, all of these promises made have come true. Are WWE actually following through on these stories, or are all of these things happening a pure coincidence? I 
the reach. Why is it that the fans write better stories than them? That is a reach, in my opinion. It was a reach. It was definitely a stretch. I mean, I mean, I take that with a grain of salt. Man. <laughs> Let's go, VJ. Let's go, VJ. I love it. Can we trade Cross to AEW for Wardlow? They've dropped the ball on both characters. Nah, nah, no, nah they haven't. Because Wardlow was once over at one point. Cross, nah, never. I'm, I'm sorry. He was over in NXT. That Adam, I will always go back to that Adam Cole b- promo. You got the smoke, the girl, the belt. You've got it all. You know what they do to make me feel special? They ring the friggin' bell, and I was just like, "Yo, this dude's done." Done. I don't know why he did that. Um, there we go. Let's let's see here. The uh, other thing I want to talk about: the U.S. title match. Why on earth did you have Santos Escobar win that tournament, fight him in a non-title match, and beat him, and then have Rey Mysterio win the championship after because, he was taken out? Because the LW is going to break up. But why? He's gonna get upset. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna turn on Ray. We can see it coming a mile away. I know, but why, dude? Like, why? <laughs> I'm not happy about it. I'm just telling you the obvious, and you know the obvious. The LWO's days are numbered. I know. Actually, I actually like his theme a lot. Matter of fact, I take that back. The LWO's days may not be numbered, but the days of Ray Mysterio being in the LWO's days are numbered. He was never supposed to be in it. That's how I always feel. Eddie was going to kick him out, and this is the same situation. Um, I, I don't know, man. I don't know what we're doing here. All I'm saying is SmackDown was a little bit of a mess for me this week. was not my favorite show. No, no, he's a mess. Moving on from that, Sean, I'm going to let you pick the next topic. We can either get into some AEW or we can get into some Marty Jannetty. I'll talk about Marty Jannetty, man. Let's talk about Marty Jannetty. Um, All right, hold on, real quick. Let me. I'm sorry. These people. Yeah, I, we got yeah. good comments coming in. How about Cross promises to win a feud? <laughs> wow, that is true. I did ask on another show yesterday why no one want Cross to get a run. It's not that no one wants Cross to get a run. You want to see something from him. I feel like he's on TV, then he disappears, then he's th- then he's back, but then he loses to AJ. Like they're doing that fifty fifty booking, and it's not it's not good. That's my issue with the Jocelyn. Uh, Six said, geez, whoever wrote this made uh, Cross sound like the Joker. Huh. Uh, MJF Tank Wardlow, Dangerous E says, uh, you need to ask the mustache, but he's the one who booked it. WWE rating still sky high, uh, according to the people. And probably I guess so. It doesn't mean it doesn't suck. Man, if this leads to an LWO heel turn, uh, is stupid to turn the original group back. Is stupid. That's Tokyo. That's right, the menace for, Tokyo says Cross is getting cut. Yikes! Yikes! All right, let's get into this now. I have to say this: growing up, these were one of my favorite action figures of all time. The Rockers. Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty, I thought they were the coolest dudes. They used to do the, we don't do drugs. We can laugh at this now. It's okay. We don't do drugs, man. We don't smoke cigarettes. Doing way worse, probably. They were out there uh, trying to promote the good stuff. But Marty Jannetty, man, like, just something different about him. Shawn, like, what did you think of Marty Jannetty, man? This Dark Side of the Ring was something else. I mean, I didn't need to see Dark Side of the Ring to know what the truth was, but I really appreciate it because Dark Side of the Ring is an excellent documentary. Um, Marty Jannetty will forever be, to me, one of the greatest, most under, I don't want to say underutilized, but most untapped, period. Marty Jannetty always came across to me as a captain of the team. That was my perspective from day one. I, I mean, I always thought Marty Jannetty was the captain of the team. And I thought that when they broke up, that Marty would have a long story career. And I thought Sean would too. I thought both guys would be successful. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame. We all know the backstory. He had some, some inner things he had to deal with and is still dealing with to this day. Um, 
I think the backstory of HBK and everybody knows I consider HBK the greatest wrestler to ever live. Um, but we're going to keep it real. I think HBK kind of pushing the envelope quicker for the Rockers to break up while Marty Jannetty was kind of thinking maybe we should take the ride this out a little longer. I think that was a little selfish on young Shawn Michaels' part, but I guess Shawn Michaels knew that he was going to go and, and do great things. Marty had the potential to do it too. But at the end of the day, though, for me, it's like Marty Jannetty had a chance to wrestle in the eight outside the ring, you know, outside the ring to cost him that. He had another chance at WrestleMania 9 outside the ring, cost him. He had another chance in 2005. In 2005, they were going to bring him back and give him a job after the one-off with Shawn Michaels and the Rockers, and he blew that too. So, I mean, I, for as much as I give Marty Jannetty credit and say, man, I wish you could have had a longer career, it's unfortunate. Because a lot of the problems that he had that cost him what could have been a long, long, illustrious career were of his own doing. Marty Jannetty makes bad decisions is what it is at the end of the day. He's been given him and Iron Sheik. Is Jannetty winning by one now? And he has the most um, mm-hmm. opportunities. Sad, man. It's really sad when you think about Marty Jannetty's career. But he he self sabotaged it himself. Like he got to be Intercontinental Champion. He could have had all that. Imagine at WrestleMania eight, you add that match with Sean and Marty on there. I think that could have been really good versus the match that we ended up getting instead with uh, Tito Santana and Sean. Because that match at WrestleMania eight ended up being basically a Shawn Michaels coronation. It was it was basically announced that match at WrestleMania eight was nothing more than a glorified here's Shawn Michaels get ready for the future instead of what would have been a battle of the rockers to find out who the future may be. Mm-hmm. It, I think you just established Sean is a bad guy, but he's our bad guy. Basically starting to set him up towards, he's moving towards the intercontinental championship is what I thought when he beat Tito Santana. Mm-hmm. Marty, we had to wait a long time to get that into 93. You got with Sherry. I mean, I I don't know. And then, like you said, so Marty Marty then gets into the tag team thing. He teamed with Al Snow, Leaf Cassidy, and the new Rockers. Marty always felt slighted by Sean. I'm going to disagree with you, though, with what you said about Sean and the Rockers. Mm-hmm. I think Sean was smart to get away from Marty. I think Sean saw the issues that were going to keep plaguing him. Because, remember, the Rockers were originally in WWF in 1988. Mm-hmm. I believe it was in Buffalo, New York, where they first flew in to meet with Vince and all of them to uh, – get down with their whole, like, okay, we're in, we're going to do all this with you guys. And then within two weeks, they were gone. Have you ever heard the famous story about the boots? Yeah, I mean, these boots are made for walking. The the nice boots, the boots are made for walking. I mean, yeah. Look, for me, me, Marty has an illustrious family history of of making big mistakes. But when you talk about HBK, and I, I almost feel like it's against my religion to talk bad about HBK. I love him so much, but it was it was presumptuous on Shawn Michaels' part, Conrad. The way the way the research I've done has shown me, and it's much more than just you know dark side of the ring. We both do our a very diligent job of looking this stuff up. Um, Marty Jannetty was presented with an option. Shawn Michaels was presented with an option to break up the team, and Marty was thinking about it. And Shawn said, "Let's just break up." Now you're saying, okay, Shawn was smart to break up the team. Sean had as many issues as Marty Jannetty did. Sean and Marty were running neck and neck as far as it, as far as the um, the foreign substances, as far as the drinking, as far as the partying. They were twins. Marty Jannetty and Sean Michaels were twins, essentially. Obviously, I'm being facetious when I say that. There was nothing different about Marty than Sean Michaels. Nothing separated Marty. Marty wasn't a better Marty. Uh, Sean Michaels wasn't a better athlete than Marty Jannetty in 1989. Uh, Shawn Michaels wasn't any more charismatic than Marty Jannetty in 1989. Marty Jannetty was 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 no less uh, no less uh, uh, apt to to put on a good match than Shawn Michaels in 1989, all the way through 1991. So f- for you to say HBK did a smart thing by getting away from him, I hear you. Like I said, I consider Shawn Michaels to be the greatest of all time. Um, but I think when you put Marty Jannetty 
nose to nose with Shawn Michaels, or I guess you would probably be a better way to say it, shoulder to shoulder with Shawn Michaels, they're essentially twins. Twins in their lifestyles, in their in-ring ability, in their charisma, in their careers. The Rockers were truly a match made in heaven as it related to a tag team because they were the same guy. That's why it worked. They they did the same double team moves. It, it was basically Rock and Roll Express 2.0. I don't want to get too too mean about it or too too deep no, into no, it. This they is were- a compliment. This is a compliment. We all know Marty Jannetty made some ish, made some made some mistakes. Well, uh, here's why here's why I think Sean was smart though. It goes back to that story that they even told on Dark Side of the Ring, which when you ask the different sides, that's where it gets fuzzy a little bit, but there are certain things that they both agree upon. So most people don't know, Rowdy Roddy Piper started that fight between Sean and Marty that night in the uh, hotel room. And they said that's when Sean started getting the ideas of, I need to get away from this dude. Mm -hmm. So Marty made it sound like he wanted to fight Sean. Sean pushes him through a window. Thank God they were on the first floor. I know, right? Wow. He pushes them out of a window. Marty then crawls back through and says, you want to try that again? And they start going at it. Marty gets on top of Sean. We all know Shawn Michaels' shoot fight record ain't too good. Sean is getting beaten silly. And then eventually the police come. They come to pick up Marty Jannetty. You know who saved the day for them? Another person who's not uh, a stranger to the police. Macho Man Randy Savage shows up. And he's like, what's going on here, guys? And the cops are like, oh, it's Macho Man. Just imagine someone getting arrested, and the cops are like, yo, that's the Macho Man Randy Savage from wrestling, yeah. So Macho's like, oh, they were just going over their match because he knows that they're in trouble, and he's there to save them. So he's like, yeah, I'll do a couple autographs with you guys, sign some pictures. You got to take care of my friends, though, and you can't tell anybody that they were wor- working out stuff for their match. They're tag partners. They were practicing on stuff. Randy Savage is a really good guy, I think. Yeah, when he – it's it's the veteran stuff. You would this is the stuff that Marty never grew out of, though, that you had to stop doing eventually. And I just don't understand, man. Like Sean probably was like, yo, I gotta get away from this dude. Like he just beat the crap out of me and he let someone instigate us into a fight. So it was just crazy. I think it, the rocker still had legs, like you said too, but at that point in time. Sean, Sean just knew the, the jig was up. He didn't want to deal with it anymore, and they split him. But when they did that that 2005 reunion, I really thought the Rockers had uh, something there. I really did. Like Dangerous Steve brought up. I don't think the Rockers. Did. No, it wasn't going to be a Rockers reunion, but it, it was it was a one off that was made. It was the vision to make to give Janetti a chance to get a full time job, and it worked. Yeah, and and it worked great. Like I thought the match with Kurt Angle was even better than the the Rockers match. Like he what? crushed it with Kurt. Gave us one of the best segments of all time with Sherry and Kurt. I got go medals. I'll never Kurt is the best fool ever. You know you're doing that too well compared to what Kurt was doing. Yeah, Still, dab ass <laughs> man. Yo, Kurt Angle is a fool. I was crying. I'll make your ankle hurt. <laughs> Yo, Kurt is the fool. Um, just a great match. And Marty had a chance and he blew it. And then they brought him back for Mr. Kennedy. Do you remember that? I do. I do. And he had another chance and blew it. Like, there's only so many times you can keep on doing this stuff and it's okay. So my heart hurts for what happened with Marty because you know what I think? Marty could be down in the Performance Center right now as one of the head trainers with Sean. And the Rockers could be training people, and I'm sure he could teach people a lot of stuff. And I know some people are like, oh, but what about Chuck Austin and that whole ordeal? I'm going to say this, and listen, I wish no ill will to Chuck Austin, but Chuck Austin shouldn't have been in that ring. I don't know if he actually told people he had only been wrestling for six months. I know he got hurt. I know he got paid. I know Marty was part of it too, and he had a lot of royalty checks withheld because of that. I was but, I was chuckling, obviously not at the situation. You're going to come up on a comment by uh, Original Big E that was absolutely hilarious. But to stay focused for a second, um, what a tragedy that that in ring accident was. But that wasn't his fault, man, and it's really a shame that he took most of the heat for that. Yeah, yeah. And and luckily for Sean, Sean wasn't blamed for it, so he got to kind of stay out of it, you know, because mm-hmm. he didn't perform the move. They had to go to court. Funny fact, if you're ever on Jeopardy, and this is the final question, who did they bring in? 
to do the move on in front of the judge to show that it was safe when they pulled out mats and they did it in front of a jury. Dean Malenko, who was helping work a referee as in the uh, Tampa area at the time, he came in to let him do the move on him. Interesting. Wow. So, funny thing for those who never knew. Um, I think we all knew a guy that you knew the sky was the limit, but a certified F up. Uh, he's the guy when you say they shot themselves in the foot. Again, it goes back to the comparison of Jeff Hardy. He can't be trusted. Yeah. Say something else Vince stole from the AWA. Oh, that's true. Dangerous E. That is so true. Wow. Mm -hmm. The Midnight Rockers were a big thing down there for a yeah. while. World Tag Team uh, HBK found God. Yeah, he actually helped Marty. Marty said he was good for like two, three weeks, and then you go back, you got to go back home eventually. And that's when stuff starts to eat you up. Uh, and through that timeline you just broke down, who was on the road making money in moments and who was in and out of jail? I could do bad all by myself. No one will notice, but if it's the two of us. We'll all have our own show on Tuesday. I keep forgetting to watch Dark Side. It's a good show. It's over now, but you can catch all the uh, past episodes. They're all on YouTube, too. To be fair, Marty jumped head uh, head first through the window to escape Sean. That coward. Bobby Heenan's reaction. Do, do, do you think they knew when they put that segment together, Sean, how legendary it would be? This That's one of my favorite, like, turns of all time. No, I don't. And I think that – I think the spontaneity of it all makes it amazing. I, I mean, obviously, they knew the spot through the plate glass window was going to be a thing. But Brutus Beefcake's – you know, which I'm not sure I believe – but at the end of the day, though, the way he threw him through the window, the way Marty took the bump through the window, I mean, you know, he took the, takes the, the magazine and rips it in half. Do the Rockers have a problem? I don't think so. It's classic. It's classic. My question to you is if it had been reversed, would Marty have been as successful? I mean, obviously, we know Marty had issues, so maybe the answer is no. But the, I, you know what my issue is, though? And, again, I feel like I'm talking bad about, again, the guy that I consider to be the greatest of all time and my favorite wrestler, by the way. Sean had issues, bro. Like, that's what I'm trying to. It's but, like. But, but Sean's issues weren't as prevalent. Like, back then, Sean knew to do good business. Like, okay. he knew. Vince Vince knew we could trust him. I think Sean became a problem later. He became out of control. But he knew, like, all right, I could party, but not as much, like, when okay. me and Marty were together. Oh, I got to chill. Okay. All right. um, that, that's how I always viewed it with it. Um do you think the barber – okay, here's another question for you. Was the barber shop a shoot now? As I mentioned, Sean put Marty through the window in the hotel. Was it too real for Marty to realize, like, I'm going to put you through that window again? I think it was a moment that Sean probably had in his mind the entire time. And I think that he wanted to make it as real as possible, and he tapped into a real place. I think Shawn Michaels, all, especially young Shawn Michaels, knew he was better. And I think that he felt justified in the fact that he would be the one turning on Marty instead of the other way around. And I think that was what propelled him to what he ended up being because Shawn Michaels is an anti-hero. Shawn Michaels didn't become a full-fledged, in my mind, Shawn Michaels didn't become a full-fledged face until he came back and, and found Jesus. I don't even think he was a full-fledged face in 1996 when he beat Red at WrestleMania 12. He still had that attitude. And I thought that Marty's friend in this, uh, I forgot where she was from, but she had mentioned that Sean was always arrogant. And you could see that. Sean always was cocky. You can feel it. You can see it. I think that's what got him to push more than Marty, that he showed like that, yeah, I'm great at this, aren't I? Even though he's doing the same thing Marty is, that Marty's right. a little more humble. Because there was a conversation that had to have been had, right, Conrad? There had to be a conversation where it's like, okay, Marty and Sean, which one is going to turn on the other? Marty probably raised his hand. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And Sean was like, I'll do it. And then they chose Sean Michaels. I'm sure Sean was given direction from other people, too. It sounds like Pat Patterson and them like Sean a little bit more. And they were like, yeah, you should you should think about a singles run, you know? I'm, I'm sure there's more to the story than we know even. But, like, it's, it's just very odd, everything that happened. Marty Gennetti, me and Sean were just messaging. I think it was on Tuesday after it aired. And it was just like, what a sad story, man. Like and that dude's sitting there with all that knowledge and all we all we were talking about were dumb Facebook posts that he's he's done and I don't even want to get into any of yeah, that. Yeah, we're not gonna get into that, but I will say this. I consider it and I think it's it's a very hard argument to argue against. I consider the Rockers the greatest tag team of all time 
to never win a World Tag Team Championship. And I also consider them a top 20 team of all time, period. And folks, that is when Bret Hart decided not to put Shawn Michaels over. If you will find the picture with the Rockers with the belt, Bret Hart sabotaged that top rope. And that's what really started everything that led to Montreal. <laughs> I'm, kid I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Top rope broke, though. And I always thought that the Rockers should have been the tag champs. I have it on one of the DVD sets that I could go back and watch the match. It wasn't bad, but it could have been way better if they had the top rope to use. And they were going to win the tag titles that night. Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels said in a previous documentary, he holds true to this day, man. Vince McMahon, it's just, it's just another sign of Vince McMahon being who Vince McMahon is. All they had to do was restart the match. Saturday night's main event was a tape show. The only people in the United States of America that would have known about the situation were the people in the arena. And all they had to do to the people, if they were worried about the people in the arena, all they would have had to say is, the ring broke, we're going to restart the match. No problem. But instead of restarting the match, uh, editing the tape, so the people watching two weeks later on NBC wouldn't have to see it, they canceled the title run. I mean, how... How terrible is that about how you're treating your employees? I mean, Shawn Michaels and, and Marty Jannetty were, were believing that they would become the world tag team champions of the number one wrestling organization in the world. And then it gets taken away from them, and they never got it back. That's a slap in the face, man. 90 when they were supposed to win it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a slap in the face. That's disgusting. I thought, it was, I thought it was crazy in 91 that you never had him have it. Yeah, I mean, but if you really think about it, Conrad, think about it. Just in, internalize that for a second. That's disgusting. That, well, tag division was great at the time, too. Let's not front. Like, this is different back in the day. Think about this. Oh, but you're overthinking it, bro. You're overthinking it. I'm talking about Sean, as in Sean Hubbard. Sean, Conrad, you guys are going to be the world tag team champions. And we go out and the ring breaks. Oh, I'm just saying, Sean, what, I'm thinking of what other time could they have given them the bells? I was just thinking, like, the oh. tag division was back from, like, 88 until they broke up, even. Right. Like, you had Legion of Doom at one point, Demolition, the Brain Busters, the Heart Foundation. They were putting on the, – the Rougeos and the Bulldogs were putting on bangers, bro. Like, the tag division was great at that time. I don't think people know. Like, they were main eventing and crushing it in different places. But – Different thing, and by the way, can I I'm, can I end this one? Sure. They Brutus the Barber Beefcake said something here, and it really touched a nerve. Because I know if it was Eric Bischoff, I'd say the same thing. He said Shawn Michaels kissed ass. Sorry, Shawn. Mm -hmm. He said that he kissed ass to get that spot that he got over Marty Jannetty. And I just looked and I said, I know Brutus Beefcake. Right. The booty man himself, Brother Brutai, is the, what was he, the disciple in the NWO. I know this dude ain't talking. The mega maniacs or whatever they called him and Hogan. The, he, the, he kissed Hogan's butt for 30 years. If, if Bischoff's nose is brown, then your lips look like you're wearing brown lipstick, brother. Don't you ever let me hear you say something like that again. Beat it. You you, it at that. you you brown nose all you brown nose yourself all the way to the main event of SummerSlam against Zeus. So yeah, he has. In, no in, other, oh, yeah. in other short news, Naito has won the G One. For those who haven't watched it yet, it's an incredible match. Go back and watch Naito's semifinals and finals matches. Semifinals is against Will Ospreay. I promise you, can't miss. Really, really good. And Naito winning the G1 means he is going to Wrestle Kingdom in the main event next year. I love New Japan's trophies and how all the stuff looks when they do it. Really good. The tournaments really, really matter. Uh, very, very impressed with Naito winning. Like, I just thought it was great. You talk about Roman Reigns storyline. That's a 10-year storyline for Naito. That's a, fact. That's a fact. Yeah, so I just need people to keep that in mind. Okay. Oh, here people people going in on the chat. The Zodiac. <laughs> I've, there's so many I didn't forgot them. The butcher. Uh, the oh, not the not 
the butcher. Wait a minute and check this out. Check this out. I know you're going to know it as soon as I say it. Brutus Beefcake, a.k.a. The Butcher, main evented Starcade. The most, the most historic pay-per-view in the history of the business outside of WrestleMania. Brutus Beefcake, a.k.a. The Butcher, main evented freaking... Let me chat, chat. Take this journey with me for, for 10 seconds. Harley Race and Ric Flair. Vader and Ric Flair. Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair. Sting and Hogan, even though they didn't work out too well. In 1995, Hulk Hogan defended the WCW Championship in the main event of freaking Starcade against Brutus Beefcake, a.k.a. The Butcher. I don't know if y'all know, 95 was some hard times, Daddy. It was hard times for the wrestling fans. But can you, uh, believe, can you believe that? Yeah, dude, that's crazy. That was a crazy decision. That must, but that was a creative control, brother. You know, wow. okay. Wow. Eddie Kingston had a heck of a G1. I agree. E. I'm, I'm happy Eddie got to go over there. Naito, I'm so happy he won. That Osprey match had a rough spot, though. Oh, yes. Naito was out on his feet at one point. Uh, yeah, I saw the, the, I think it was from that DDT, a little rough. Um, and I heard someone's injured too, but we won't get into evil and Sonata and all that. Uh, Kingston booked a heck of a six man match. F new Japan, uh, will keep getting done dirty. I don't know what you mean by that. Tokyo Starcade is a house show now. That's sad. That's true. It's sad. It's sad. I guess we can get into some of this other stuff. You want to talk all in? I mean, is there something you want to say about it, or do you want to talk the punk stuff first real yeah, we're quick? Not, we don't really get too deep in all, in all in. I just want to say that the all-in build has been lackluster to me. I know. I, I just want to throw that out there one more time. I'm still not invested in punk, in, in, um, punk invested in uh, MJF and Adam Cole. I'm not feeling it. I know I'm in the minority. It's okay. But, yeah, I mean, I... I am not overwhelmed with this pay-per-view. So um, I just think they should have done better. They're considering it the biggest event in wrestling history, their words. And it is the biggest event in AEW history, without question. And I just think that they dropped the ball. That's all I think. I think this card is not conducive to what the greatest show in the history of your company is supposed to be. I I have fears. Um but I think also they're doing the best that they can. L- look at the situation they're in. Like, would I love to see the rumor is Jericho may face Osprey? Would I? I would have booked Pack versus Osprey if I couldn't do Omega again. Rumor has it New Japan wants that match. I, I won't get into the politics of it. But you could have did Pack and Osprey, and I think that would have been great. But Pack's hurt now. You're dealing with some injuries too that I think are tweaking like the mid of your show, like the middle of it, where you could have had some really great bangers. Right. And now you're like, uh, we got to adjust. We got to like, where's the Lucha Bros on here? We don't have a match for them yet. We don't have a lot of things that are happening. Um, I am excited. We, we they've been doing a women's four way tournament. We do know that Hikaru Shida has advanced, and we also know Soraya has advanced. And the Bunny will face Britt Baker on Dynamite. I'll let you place your bets now. For who's going to win that match, I'm pretty sure we all know. I am also happy to see some talent who who weren't going to initially get like a big opportunity in the wrestling world. And because of AEW, they are. Uh, and I'm referring to not only MJF. MJF st- was on the opening match for All In. I see why they did this too, Sean, when you're like, why is he main eventing? Uh-huh. He opened All In. And now he's in the main event of all. And look at what happened in five years. Look at what we've done. Look, nah, right? it, I get it. It puts them up. But look at this match, though. Who would have ever told AR Fox, you're going to wrestle in front of 80,000 people? Who are you going to wrestle? You're going to wrestle Sting and Darby Allen in a coffin match with your enemy from Lucha Underground. That's crazy for those brothers. Like, I'm happy for them. Like, that's wild to me. I'm happy. So, I'm familiar with the backstory, right? But let me ask you a question. Um, is that conducive to the biggest sh- mat, biggest show in the history of your company? I'm gonna ask you the I, same I'm, thing. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm not. I think it's a but, story, 
But but this is not this is not a you get a you get a chance to be on the show because you're loyal and no like if, if, put them in put them in a battle royal, and we talked about this and I think I got this idea from you put them in a battle royal. That's true, but I think Swerve deserves this moment. No, not I Swerve. really do. I, not Swerve. But I think I like Ar Fox with them too, though. I think Ar Fox. Ar Fox can be could have been the manager for this match. But you gotta have Sting in there. That's that's why I think it, it works better. Cause you're not gonna put Cage in there. No offense to Brian Cage. The you. gates of gates of agony are their own team, and you don't want to meddle this up to where it's like, oh, there's four there's four people in, so we got to give Sting and Darby partners. Now you're forcing people to be in it that don't need to be. This, you know, this show reminds me of, and then we're gonna move on. To me, it reminds me of WrestleMania, and what I mean by that is, um, because I have to clean that up for people to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> it reminds me of WrestleMania in the aspect of. They've built it up for two nights now because they want more people to be on the show. I think it was the timing thing, personally. I'm glad it's two nights. I think I th- I think we argued about this before on uh, Malik's podcast. I'm a big proponent of it being two nights because I couldn't stay there and do the like we a whole workday marathon of WrestleMania. Like you were taking the day off to have a party to clean up, and it, you started at lunchtime, and you're like, "Well, y'all, it's been fun." Or people would leave halfway through watching the show. Mm-hmm. Um, 93 to 95, I was not in the WCW. I agree with uh, Big Hub, but feeling it. Uh, poorly booked for the event uh, they want this to be. Like, I'm, yo, Sean, I'm going to give you this homework for next week. If you sure. got time and you're sitting down on your board, I want to hear what everyone's all-in card would be. You with, Here's my only restriction you're getting. CM Punk cannot wrestle Kenny Omega or any of the elite. Okay. There is no one-on-one. There is no trios. There is nothing. I'm still letting you book FTR how you want, but you tell me the card. I want to hear a card. I'm going to put together an actual card, and, we're gonna, and we can post it on the show and let people see it. I'll put okay. together a full card, a full card of, let's just say, 10 matches that I think would be, that I think that would be conducive to the show that they are predict that they want this to be. Fact, and now, factor injuries. Mm-hmm. Factor and all that other stuff too, mm-hmm. outside. But the only thing is that you can't do is book CM Punk against the Elite. No problem. Let's just pretend they're doing that. I just want to see what people come up with. And, and by the I way, that, real, real quick, by the way, a little bit of a spoiler: Adam Cole versus MJF would be on the show. I'm interested. I really want to see what your card is. I'm gonna give you a week. Yeah. I'm, I'm really interested. I'm gonna to put see it that. I'm gonna send it to you so you can post it because I want. I want. Everybody that, it, together. Deanna, McKinney, anyone else who ain't feeling this, let me know. Cause I want to hear I want to see what you got. All in is the best that they can do, except expect a lot of multi-man and I bet a battle royal. I think you'll see a battle royal on the pre-show because they did that. It was called the over the budget. I could see them doing something like that again too. Coffin match will be nuts. I think that's gonna be a, a potential show stealer. Uh the best car you can make with the people you got, it's all hands on deck. So the UK fans are just happy for wrestling, so it's a win. But you have to go to all out and have to show up and show out in Chicago. You do, but you gotta you gotta get people in on this show too. I think the issue is you book these shows too close. That's a e. I think if he could have moved it, he should have. If he had the chance to move it, consider it. Uh, biggest crowd, biggest show. I'm happy for Swerve and Fox. I'm burnt out on Sting being in every big show. Jocelyn, truthfully, you're, you you probably don't have too many more of these yeah, with Sting. If you're a Sting fan, you got to enjoy him while you can. Whose house? Swerve's house. Sorry, I love the beginning of that. After that segment two weeks ago, Swerve is the boss. Definitely one of my favorite stories currently. I've been I've been really feeling Swerve, man. Like I'm thinking Swerve, like put him in that main event picture. I'm not saying he's got to win the belt, but I'm saying give him a chance. I think he can do something. Uh, e brings up a good point for anyone who is going. Our friends across the pond. Door is opening at three thirty, and the show starts at five thirty. It's going to be a long show. You once you have all those people too, you have to have a way to get them in there. True. John, you ever what was the last WrestleMania you went to? Twenty eight. How long did it take you to get it? It took a minute, right? No, I was. It took me about twenty minutes from the time I, I stepped online to going in. Really? Wow, yeah. man! I remember the I went to thirty three. That one took a long time to get in. Long time. I thought twenty nine was much uh, much better. If it was up to me, Punk wouldn't even be on the damn show. Ah, ah, we'll, get ah, ah, ah. we'll get into that. AW usually delivers. I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know what all the belly aching is about. The WrestleMania records is toast. Records are meant to be broken. Yeah, I saw a lot of people complaining that like well, I'm happy about the record. Don't get it twisted. I'm happy about the record being broken. Yeah. Uh you said ten matches. I'm not limiting anyone to ten matches. I'm just you no, can no, do I, what you want. I think she that said, was John. I said, I said I'd put together a ten match card. Yeah. I knew what you were saying, Sick, think, about I'm not feeling the card. Be, I think it'd be a four hour show, right? Yeah, you could. For this type of show, that's fine. A, all in needs to be the WrestleMania of AEW. Now, I think next year if they get if they're gonna redo it again, Sean, time out, time out. I think you're gonna restructure things too, though. Because here's what I think happened, and y'all gonna get mad at this. Did you see the WBD news this week? Yes. About live streaming, they were finally found out about. I think they kept AEW on the line, saying like, "Oh, we might have live streaming for you guys. We'll air that show for you guys." And then they were like, "Ah, oh, tough break. It's not gonna be ready in time." What do you want us to do? Put it on our BR app, you know? <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, like, come on, man. Like, they, they song and danced them. Too much Sting? No, no. I mean, I love Sting. I, I ain't got no issue with Sting. Like I said, we got limited time with my guy Sting. I think if they moved uh, the American shows back to give time between the events, you could do that. At Wembley, I want Prince Nana to get a full minute to dance this word, Steve. Alec brother, at the, yo, Prince Nana is a fool. He retweeted me this week, too, because I was laughing at that. That was so good. I'm good with what TK's got to do to make lemonade out of those lemons. Just pray no one on the card now gets injured. Yeah, yeah, please. TK don't need none of that. Um, another match on the card, we got, uh, besides MJF and Adam Cole, we got CM Punk and Samoa Joe, which has not been confirmed yet, but Joe definitely uh, choked Punk out on collision pretty bad in the crowd. Just yoked him up and said, you're done. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I loved it. Big fan. Um, do we talk about Punk now, or do we do we discuss the tag title match? Because this is going to play into it, too. No, we, we talk about Punk now. It's time. It's time. Let's get. Let's talk about it. Because we're going to end the show. Let's dig into this. So I'm going to say our this. boy. I'm gonna surprise a lot of people. Punk, CM Punk on Saturday after the show cut a promo. <laughs> CM Punk then discussed about someone brought a sign. Dear wrestling fans, I don't know why you would bring a sign to a show where that person's not booked. Just asking the question. But people did, and Punk responded to a sign that said, Hangman Country. CM Punk should have not said a word about this sign. It was petty, it was childish, and he shouldn't have brought it up. Oh, I gotta put the, I gotta put the violin away. I didn't know you were going there. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, I told you I was going to surprise you. Keep it in the stack, okay? CM Punk shouldn't have said anything. But that does not diminish the fact that Hangman Adam Page has still yet to be punished for anything. I know it was too good to be true. It's a. I know it's so. Good. This is so, Sean, Sean. Oh man, you don't ever want to listen. This is me in real life. If if my brother smacked me. And I only got in trouble and he didn't. My parents would hear about this for the rest of their lives. There are stories to this day that they have to hear about for the rest of their lives. Like, oh, brother, I should have never did that. You daggone right. Because when someone's telling the truth, they will remind you of it over and over and over. So in this situation, where's Hangman's punishment? I see a lot of elite fans talking today. Oh, it was so funny what they did on BTE, wasn't it? <laughs> so it's funny when they make jokes, but when CM Punk tries to be funny, it's not cool. It's how could you? How could you send home Ryan Nemeth? Did you? When's the last time Ryan Nemeth wrestled? Sean, tell me right now. Well, yes, a date. Well, you can't. Deal. Nobody can because nobody cares. Here's the deal. By the way, Rafael Villagil, awesome comment. I agree. Um, and Vinny, I agree. Here's the thing. I'm going to answer your question this way. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm just going to say it slightly differently. CM Punk needs to be on his best behavior. CM Punk has earned himself, earned himself a short leash in a lot of fans' minds. He has been an a-hole for a long, long time. Some of it is because people have made him into that. 
And some of it is just because he's a natural born a-hole. And that's something he would say himself. And it's okay to be CM Punk. I don't give a crap what anybody thinks. I'm, you know, I'm the guy. And that's okay. No, we just talking about Shawn Michaels. Nobody really makes it to the top of this business without having a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. But these real life events that are taking place, and I'm not talking about Hangman Page and the Young Bucks and the Elite. I'm not talking about them because that's not the subject of what we're talking about. Them being wrong, them being wrong is a thing. I've said that they're wrong. They're wrong. They've been wrong for a long time. But at the end of the day, CM Punk has to take his own accountability into consideration. And CM Punk has to say, you know what? No matter what I do, no matter what I do, people are going to think that I'm an a-hole. So I'm not going to sit up here and do anything unnecessary. I'm going to do my job, and I'm going to go home. But CM Punk can't do that. Because as soon as CM Punk sees a freaking sign in the audience, he wants to make some kind of snazzy comment. Everybody in this situation is wrong. But CM Punk has a shorter lease because CM, in, in the court of public opinion, because CM Punk has a history of having a bad attitude. That's the issue. That's the Sean. issue. Sean. You would have a bad attitude, too, if it was all of our podcasting friends and there was one new guy who came in and he's making a bunch of money. And I was like, guys, not really feeling them, you know? Right. Remember I remember when I brought you guys all in? Remember? I'm the E in Elite. You know? Did you? Did anybody else see those? Nobody sees those videos and wonder, man, Conrad, why are you being an Elite hater? No, I have a problem when you're putting yourself above the brand. What is this? You go to Sports Center and say this? You go on podcasts and say that you're the reason? Yeah, you know, it was a tough decision for us. <laughs> what? Are you fu- Yo, Sean, you got to know, bro. You got to know. If I'm Tony Khan, I am livid that you're talking like this. Livid. What do you mean it was a tough decision? What do you Were you going to go to WWE and do all this stuff? You have to know they shouldn't pay them. You have to be a professional, man. CM Punk has been done wrong in a lot of situations. No, no, no. We're done with Punk. We're going to talk about the elite right now. This is about the elite being professional. Okay, if you want to switch gears and talk about the elite, then I can give them as much criticism, if not more, than I can give CM Punk. Let's hear it, because that's what I need to hear right now. It's good for my soul to hear more. I've been giving this to you for the last four months. No, I needed the same level, though. Okay. I needed Uh, the same. CM Punk. Okay. Hold on. Let me ask you this question. So today... CM Punk and Ryan Nemeth got into it apparently a few weeks ago from the first episode of Collision Uh because, once again, bench players talking like starters, to quote Drake, and he had to get put in his place. Like, yo, dog, don't come over here starting that stuff. You're the softest wrestler. Good quote, by the way. Yeah. No offense. That was what I thought when Brandon Cutler did it. Bench players talking like starters. I hate it. Like, chill out, bro. Know your role. I've been both. I've been a starter. I've been a bench player. It's fine, but you got to know what you're doing and where you are right now on this team. And right now, Ryan Nemeth don't get no TV time, so he needs to chill out and sit down. All right? You ain't Dolph, bro. Sit down. Talking to me like you're crazy. The next thing is that when you get into all of this, so this happened weeks ago. Nobody released this information until today? Until after Punk made those comments, you're you're a, you're a um, you're a businessman as I am. You have worked in the corporate world. Sometimes they keep these things behind closed doors. You know that. Yeah, but Uncle Dave knows all this stuff. He's like, ah, not today, not today. I, I'm, not not saying, today. I'm not saying it's not shady. I'm just saying that's what people do. Right. It's just despicable though. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. And then you wait until the moment now unload the cannon on Punk because that's what they do. I just want people to pay attention to all of this stuff. I get it. I hear you. Christopher Daniels, why was he sent home? Christopher Daniels has worked on all the ROH shows on Collision still. People, nobody thought to go look it up, though, to say that. To, he got sent home. You know, you know what Punk made a point to? This is a classic, like I said. So he probably went up to Tony. We're going to play little devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. Why can't A Steel be here? Well, he was part of management, and he was part of that fight. CM Punk says, I understand. Cool. Hey, by the way. Is Christopher Daniels on the show today? Yeah. 
Does he work in management still? Yeah. Wasn't he part of that fight too? Didn't he get suspended? Yeah, so we're going to uh, not have him on then. Because you can't double talk. Because now it's getting real right. lawyery. You're right. You're right. So uh, that's all I'm saying with some of this stuff. Don't, don't paint. But he says one thing. Don't paint him to be the bad guy. Because no one said anything bad about those never, elite comments never, all last never, week. Never gave me a chance to talk about the elite. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about in general, though. No, I, want, said, but I want to. But I want to because I feel like they deserve fairness. I'm going to kick it to you. But all I kept hearing last week was what Punk made fun of in the promo, too. We're the heart and soul of AEW. We've done it all for you. Listen, if it wasn't Matt, it would have probably been someone else. All right? I'm just saying. He took a good business opportunity. Am I grateful that the elite started AEW? Of course. But at the same token, don't sit up here and start the front and, like, this wouldn't be nothing without you. All right? There's a lot of talent. But go ahead, Sean. I digress. I just just want to say that the elite, with the exception, I've never really, I can't really talk bad about Kenny Omega. I haven't really heard anything. But the elite are pretentious, entitled childish, unprofessional babies. You've never heard me say anything different than that. I'm telling you something that probably you will disagree with, is that CM Punk is held to a different standard in the court of public opinion. And that's what you haven't been able to wrap your head around, bro. Well, no, I get it, Sean, but here's the issue. Everyone pledges their allegiance to the Bucks in them. I'm not pledging my allegiance to anybody. Not you. Okay, I'm talking about people in the company. Right. right. They owe the young bucks for those jobs. Colt Cabana would not be there, I think, if it was. Who do you want, Tony? Yo, we know Colt. The Bucks have a lot of connections. We know Kevin Steen. We know El Generico. We can call him up if you want. There's a lot of great talent out there, and the Bucks are friends with them. I get that. Right. Anybody who's on PWG, all that stuff. But don't pretend like there's not some allegiance and Punk's going to be looked at as the bad guy in this situation. Those people on Collision, there's a reason they're on Collision. Just peep it. Just peep it. Oh, the, separa- the, separation time on Dynamite. Even, the separation is not even, you know, being blocked out in a coy way. Like, it's like it's very obvious what's going on here. Uh, Six says, can we list? Yeah, there's plenty of times. The media scrum. He said a lot of things on the microphone he shouldn't have said. The ESPN interview. We can get into a lot of times where he came across that way. Talking well, here's the crap, difference. Talking crap, when he's do- talking crap when he's doing MMA commentary. Yeah. It's like being a professional, bro. That's my and, – and, and, and Conrad, I, I like CM Punk. I like CM Punk. But, so I'm but going, Sean, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going on record right now. The wrestling world is better when CM Punk is a part of it. But he needs to chill. That's not a fair statement. He, but he's teaching you how to make money 101. He's teaching you. A little dig here, a little dig there. Let's talk. Why haven't they still talked? So they signed those new contracts, and you mean to tell me they said they still weren't working with CM Punk? They probably have decided they don't want to work with them, and that's unprofessional. I agree. That's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. That's ridic- it's not ridiculous. It's wrong. But it's also a situation where you're kind of going into things in a bad spot. You know why you're going into a bad spot, Conrad? Because you signed on with a company where all these guys hold position of power. And they have that right. This is not, and I'm not going to give any credit to Vince McMahon, but this is not a company that has a clear-cut leader. The leader of the company is very flim-flammy, wishy-washy, backwards and forwards. We know about him. We like him. We think he's a nice guy. But Tony Khan, has. has, we've talked about this before, needs to step it up as it relates to his enforcement of the rules. What rules? And this is this will all go back to be damn professional, bro. To be damn professional, you're not gonna sit up here and you can't come on a SummerSlam post game show, okay? Let's let's go there. We're not gonna go on the live SummerSlam post game show on YouTube and say, you know what? Uh, My name is LA Knight, and WWE was stupid and ignorant for not putting me on before. But you know what? I'm here now, so now I'm going to prove how big of an idiot Triple H is and how big of an idiot Vince McMahon is and how big of an idiot and how much better I am than Roman Reigns and how they can't really lace it. They can't even lace my boots. You know why you're not going to say something like that? Because that will be your first and last appearance in WWE. They have control over there. 
They suck at storyline writing. They make me want to throw up every week. But at least they have structure. AEW doesn't have a person in charge that can enforce things. He's too nice. He's a, he's somebody I would love to have a cup of coffee with and talk wrestling. Because I don't drink. Uh, well, most people would say have a beer. I would love to be able to sit down and talk wrestling with Tony Khan. But Tony Khan couldn't tell anything to tell me anything about being a boss. Nothing. What am I? Tell me what I'm saying is wrong. I just... That's where the problems start. You have to be able to check CM Punk. You have to be able to check the Young Bucks and check uh, uh, Hangman Page. We're not going to do this crap. Unless it's a storyline angle to make it better for the TV viewers, we're not doing this anymore. But this is the same thing I had mentioned to someone on Twitter today. I said, you're missing a lot of what happened with the whole story because it was punk sucks, punk sucks, punks this, punks that. And I had to finally respond to some people and I said, listen, bro, you're forgetting what Hangman did in the beginning. What was the comment Hangman referenced? And I haven't even mentioned this on here yet. I'm about to drop a different view on this. Yeah, come on. It was the take of... You talk a big game about workers' rights. Who was that comment about? It wasn't really about Colt Cabana. The original thought of the tweet and the comment. Give it to me. It was about Mercedes and Trinity. Mm. And now I'm flipping it on people. That was about two black women who were done wrong, and CM Punk stood with them because he felt the exact same way. The moment you didn't do what that company wanted, it was F you, I'm going to make you look bad, because that's what Vince McMahon's done to the wrestlers and some people that have been his victims. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say it like that. It's true. And, and that's what he's always done. And when CM Punk stood with them, you decided to go on national television where you were going to get a promo where you smack CM Punk and knock him down and walk away with your head held high, and you pick that moment to do it, and Punk still went through with it. And he was like, hey, yo, I got a problem with what you just did out there. And then nothing got done, and you're still walking around? Nothing has happened to you? You're still walking? I got a new contract. Nothing happened to you? He can't let it go. And the Punk's problem is he needs to let that stuff go. He's got to let it go so that they can move on from this. But I can see how it ruffles his feathers, though. It would make me very mad, too, to know that you're going to let him do that to me? And I'm the one bringing you money? I'm the He didn't tell a lie about those action figures. That's all I'm going to say. I saw someone put up uh, something about the pegs before. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Uh, BJ says, I hope this booking slash booking info is true. I hope he gets booked to Wembley to get instantly choked out by Joe. Thanks for coming. Ah. Uh, Ryan is a goof. He didn't fit in on collision, selling like a goof and doing the Pee Wee Herman dances. Oh, my Lord. Even the elite have issues. I'm not saying they are perfect, but Punk should just start his own promotion and have only what he wants like others have. But that's the issue. I think collision's been better booked than Dynamite. Collision's a better show than Dynamite. The end of that's, that's the issue. As great as the elite are, they're the ones helping with the Wednesday show. Yeah. You know, but that's personal preference, though. Someone may feel differently. If Punk got up in Nemeth's face and asked if we have a problem, we could take it outside. Sounds kind of a steely. Just saying mad aggressive. Nah, sick. But you can't come over there and then start problems again. He said Nemeth started trying to stir the pot again was the issue. So that doesn't help either when the elites guys, the the underlings, I guess. I don't know what to call them. The guys who aren't on TV start doing that stuff for them. It doesn't make sense. Puck doesn't do little dogs. He goes all in. <laughs> that time he punched the wrong fan for hitting him in the back of the head on TV, then going on Twitter, uh, tweeting hands of steel. Now he's mad about uh, us talking on Twitter. Knock it off, Phil. Come on, bro. That's what I'm trying to say. But, but, Sean, he can't do hands of steel here. Booker T got to jack someone up at one time. When him and Batista had a problem, you can't do that anymore, but that's the era he's from, too. You got to remember, him and Teddy Hart had a fight one time. And, he, and Teddy Hart said, I respect CM Punk. Because Joe was talking mess that day, too. He said, Punk was the only one who got up and said, yeah, I said it. What's up? Let's mm -hmm. go outside. He said he jacked Punk up, took him outside, beat him down. But he said, at least Punk stood up like a man and said, yeah, I said it. And he said he took his licks, and he kept it moving, and it was done after that. Do you know like, what everyone I'm, else? I'm going to tell you what I would say to Phil Brooks. To Phil Brooks. CM Punk. To Phil Brooks. I would say, Phil, I think you were – 
one of the greatest wrestling talents of the past 15 years. Just chill. Chill. Because I want to see you for another 10. Please just relax. That's all. That's my whole point, bro. That's my whole You're not wrong. point. Not stop wrong in any of this. Stop letting these kids or childlike people that are acting like kids get under your skin. <laughs> I'm waiting for Punk to go full Negan. TK listed all the records, buy rates, and ratings at a scrum. They've been trying to get rid of them ever since. I think that was the one where he, he – was that the one where he beat Page or was that the one yeah, before? I think the one where he beat Page. I'm not sure, though. Yeah, but I say this as a Hangman and Punk fan. You want Hangman, uh, you want to hold Hangman for one incident one time, then he stayed away with everything he's shown for his career. He's probably upset that he started it. Once again, an apology can be written. Here's where they look bad. CM Punk has written multiple times today again even. I want to sit down and talk to them. They don't want to talk to me. He's written it. He's like, I'm tired of saying that. I said, yeah, I'll talk. Let's talk. Let's apologize. Let's sit in a room. Nope, they don't want to do it. So I don't know if it's at their lawyer's request. I don't know the background behind it, but I think it's ridiculous. Like I said, and you know what? We talk about it every week. You could have had a banger match on this card. You could have did something different on this card, and you're not doing it. You could have flexed and tried something else, but you didn't do it. So now you're stuck those, with what you got. Those, by the way, are, are that first one especially is a match that is worthy of calling it the biggest show in AEW. And I think it should still happen. Now, there's rumors, Sean, that some people say that this is part of a work. I don't know if you saw that. Voices I, of Wrestling I, said it first, and then Uncle Dave. Away, bro. Huh? Shows two weeks away. No, no, no. I'm talking about this whole thing with Punk is a work, somebody said. Oh, that. I don't believe that. Voices of Wrestling said that. But Uncle Dave says, no, 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 it's not. I don't know who to believe. Chad, if you have any insight, you can tell me about that. Um... Let me see this. BJ said, but Punk doesn't stop. That should be a sign that Punk needs to do some wow. self-work. That is a great take, BJ. That's a great take. Oh, God. What's wrong with what he said? Nothing. No, I'm just saying it's it's easier to say to stop to the person who's not in the advantage seat. Do you get what I'm saying? It's I, I'm saying it's harder for him to not stop if he's seeing, oh, wow, it's so funny that Ryan Nemeth gets to come here and talk to me like that. You know what I mean? But would someone be able to talk to the elite on a lower level like that? Absolutely not. So he's like, well, treat me the same then, since I'm your number one. When you're the top draw, you can do things that other people can't. That's what I'm saying. No, I Punk knows it. Right. Where I'm from, uh, we handle stuff with the fist. Jeez, Tokyo. Jeez, Louise. Sean working the no, boards. You guys know that, Sean. No, you know that, Sean. Where's his hands this week? <laughs> No, I'm See? not. Yeah, no, put your hands up and make do. Put your hands up right now. Okay. Yeah. Do you see anything? Do you see anything AEW popping up right now? You just turned it to McKinney, bro. Take it down. All right. Thank you. Are you gonna go back to it or no? <laughs> You're so full of crap. <laughs> I, I just, I just don't have time. If wow. Here, let me get it back. Okay. Thank you. So if uh, CM Punk was a straight edge, he'd be a Marty Jannetty. Sometimes he'd be in his own way. Uh, just imagine. No, I think CM Punk believes in the stuff he believes in. Sometimes it's to a fault, though. You can, you can believe in something too hard. Everyone involved needs to be an adult, so it's ridiculous. Agreed. Yeah. Easier said than done in pro wrestling. But, 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 but is all I'm hearing CJ say. Hey. I think right, well, we really get to was telling the truth on that one. All right, y'all enjoy them super kick parties. If uh, if he ends up leaving, I'm gonna be like toodaloo, enjoy him. Just like I kept telling people with Fight Forever, that if you never see another uh, wrestling video game from a triple A AAA company again, toodaloo. I don't want to hear your complaints. See ya. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna do to people. You had your chance to get a good game. You wanted to complain. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> Have there been any? I haven't played the game in weeks. Has there been any like download? Down? I haven't looked to see if there's an update. I've been super busy lately. Yeah. Like I can't even. It, the moments that I have to even put these pictures up is precious time to me. <laughs> so he's, he's saying I'm not playing the game. It's not because I'm dogging the game. It's because I don't have time for video. I'm I'm gonna get Madden this week, but I don't even have time to play it. That's all right, Josh Allen. Big, good, good game, baby. Good game, Bills Mafia. I want to talk about this match real quick. And this is another thing I might have a problem with. And this doesn't have to relate to Punk. It doesn't have to. I just did this one. Where are my hands? Back. Please Where are my don't hands? play this. Where are my hands? 
right there. Right, and you just took down the picture. You gave me control. I can see the whole panel. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen. Complaints are very valid, my friend. What I'm saying is when there's no more games, I don't want to hear these precious YouTubers who made two to three videos about the game. Is this game dead? It's over for it. When it's gone, don't say nothing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at you like, remember those videos you made about the game dying? I'm going to look at you. You don't get to play the victim and have the triumph where you're like, they put everything in. I said, I'm great. You don't get to have it both ways. That's what people do, Sean. This is the crap I'm talking. You guys think I'm crazy, but I can't sometimes like spit it out the right way. That's what I'm seeing with the Bucks. And speaking of this, now let's get back to this tag title garbage. Oh, Put this oh. garbage on screen, Sean. Thank you. Ah! So, <laughs> FTR and the Young Bucks. If the Young Bucks walk out of All In, take that crap down, Sean. If they walk out of All In, bro, with the tag team titles, this is ridiculous. You mean to tell me? Oh, they're gonna win. FTR. Oh, they're gonna win. Oh, it's funny when they decided to do the match. You didn't do it when all the belts were on the line. Remember that? Uh, Ring of Honor, New yeah, Japan. I'm you not, had all the belts. Look, I'm not happy about it, but the Bucks are definitely gonna win this match. I'm sorry. If the Bucks walk out with those tag team titles, and you don't think that has a craw on CM Punk if he just found that out? Let's just say on that that Saturday show, like, oh yeah, the Bucks are winning. I promised them in their contracts. Well, maybe, what? Maybe so. Right. So maybe that's what tipped him off. But these guys are not more over than FTR. Who's had the better matches? Be realistic in the chat right now. Who's had the better matches? FTR. Who's put more people over? Who's elevated people's game? Well, I, think, I ain't never heard nobody talk about Juice Robinson favorably except for me. I mean, Get out of here. I think FTR, let's just put it this way. Who put more people over? That's 50-50 to me. But FTR is the better team. FTR is the better team. And FTR deserves FDR deserves a win of this magnitude. And he, and they're gonna lose. The Bucks are gonna win. And I'm telling that's a shame, but that's what's gonna happen. I feel like they're gonna give them the trios titles later as the here you go, guys. Sorry about that. The punk and FTR. That's what they're gonna they're gonna get consolation prized. It's ridiculous. And it's BS. And I called this a long, long time ago when Swerve and Keith Lee won. I said they did that on purpose. Mm. And then they went into the trios division. Then they were like, oh, let's see who could top that at All Out last year. Remember this stuff, people? Oh, Conrad's got a good memory. Like I said, I don't forget. Who's going to top that? Who's going to beat that? Boys in the back, step your game up. <laughs> Fooey, get out of here with that trash. Why didn't you put FTR over like you should have? They know they should have did that. You're right about that. You're right about that. We'll see. I don't even put it past them. Let's lose it all in, then win it all out. Oh, and the Hardy Boys, the team who probably shouldn't get the tag team titles because they're not ready for them, wouldn't surprise me either if they're like, let's drop them to our friends that we looked up to. Uh, I could see it. And from a fan perspective, if the Hardy Boys win, they have a better chance of winning them from them than they do FTR because no one's going to believe it if it's okay, FTR. You this. Would you be equally upset? At, I think the Bucks winning it all in is a sham, but I do think it's going to happen. Do you think it would be as bad, in your opinion, if FTR retains it all in the biggest show in history, quote unquote, and then loses them to the Bucks the following week? Uh, that's what I'm saying. It wouldn't matter. I could see them doing that just to be like, ah, we outsmarted you. Ha ha ha. So it, but, would, it would bother you equally. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If they beat them, I, I, I would just say, like, you have no business winning these right now. The title should be on the acclaimed or FTR, period, right now. They're okay. the best two teams. Agreed. But at the end of the day, the Bucks write their own tickets. And that's why I think they're going to, it's not, I'm not saying it's right. It's wrong, but I don't know. Very weird. Very weird. I'm lost to Baldur's Gate three to start back up. Uh, uh, don't get me started on wrestling video games. I hear you. Sean pull a magic work in the boards. He, he gave me control. Again, oh, y'all. We're, we're in good hands. Don't do that. <laughs> Ultra pro wrestling is my new hope for what I was looking for. We'll see. We'll see if they deliver. I hope so. Only 14 people are playing Fight Forever on Twitch. Just saying. Maybe we'll <laughs> yeah, right. update. Don't tell them it's killing them today. No, but that's pe people keep bringing that up. But, Sean, here's what I'm saying. The more you talk about the bad stuff with things like this, when you only have WWE 2K, I don't want to hear it then. Well, this, what you're saying right now is the reason why I keep my mouth shut, okay? I'm not even going to go too deep into it. 
I think you know how I feel about Fight Forever, but I'm not going to go out public against Fight Forever because I love alternatives. I love alternatives. So you need those things. And I'm telling you, because that's what's going to make. 2k better because the moment that game's gone they're gonna go right back to resting on their laurels they're gonna be like nah we're good we can add one thing in just like wwe when wcw went out of business yep uh let's see here sean playing with the graphics oh, he gave it back to me i'll leave leave him alone <laughs> young ducks i yes i coined that a long time i swear if i could make a shirt and i don't think that they would tell me to take it down i would do it hardy boys d- don't deserve the titles FTR over Young Bucks, facts. They just need to put teams over. No, the problem is the Bucks haven't been delivering as well. They haven't. That's what it is. They haven't been. They've been coasting. I consider, I'm not talking. I consider the Young Bucks still to be the third best tag team in the world. They just haven't, but they have not been doing that kind of work lately. Sick. I have no issue with you saying uh, the numbers and all that stuff. I'm just saying that there's big YouTubers and people pushing a narrative at this point. You you can release one bad video about what Fight Forever needs to do. Good. We're done. I've seen people do like three or four, and I'm like, why are you still talking about I heard you the first time. And like, let, you know me, what I mean? let, let me go on the record, too, and say something that I think you'll appreciate. Stop comparing Fight Forever to WWE 2K. Stop comparing the controls. Stop comparing the graphics. Stop comparing the gameplay. They're two different games. What we are used to is 2K. We're used to WWE 2K, so anything that's different is going to throw us off. Stop doing that. Play the game individually and create your own opinions. I know how I feel about Fight Forever. I'm not going to say it out loud. Let's just put it like this. I will say this out loud. There's some more work that needs to be done, but I think there's potential there. And they're still doing work, technically. At yeah. least that's what they've said. So we'll see. Hopefully they get it done. If not, that's on them, too. I don't know. I can't stick up for you if you if you blow the, if you fumble the bag, you know. That's on you. But I want them to do well is what I'm saying at the end of the day because I need more competition. Competition creates better things. That's why you're here listening to this podcast because there's many other podcasts you can listen to. And you choose us every Monday live at 6.05 Eastern Standard Time. Sean, take us out of here. Let the people know what you got coming up. You guys can join me Wednesday, Dynamite. Hopefully Derek's here. Derek's not here. Remember the whole, like, let's do the Fight Forever match. Oh, Derek. Derek, you downstairs, bud? I don't hear anybody. Uh, not here. Go figure, everybody. Go figure. Remember this. Should we count that as a forfeit? I Let think me know, so. Chad. Like, uh, Derek's my guy, but I don't know. Man. Like, it doesn't look good. He said he was coming. He ain't here. Surprise, surprise, surprise. That's what we used to say at my old shop. Sean, mm-hmm. take us out of here, brother. Yo, man, so good to have another episode of Clash of the Podcast in the books coming up on episode 51 next week, God willing. Yo, it's been a – Derek's on his way. See, there you go. Look at that. Nah, late, fam. You said yeah. you said you'd be here before. Too late. But, um, yo, another great episode. Conrad, I salute you. Chad, I salute you guys. been another tremendous episode. Um, August 31st, Hubbard Wrestling Weekly is returning with another big episode. Got some guests coming in. Um, to discuss some really good things about storyline writing. Yo, I said tonight that I wasn't going to get emotional. And I wasn't going to go crazy. But August 31st, the weekend going into payback, I'm get, I'm going in. All out? All out as well. That's true. I'm going in to talk about WWE's crappy storyline writing. Now, anybody who's watched me on this show with Conrad knows how I feel about WWE storyline writing. And we are going to break it down. Crystal's coming back. Renzi is coming back. And I'm not sure who else. And Conrad, okay, well, this is exclusive because Conrad did not confirm He'd be back, but it is official now. Conrad will also be back. That's what I was looking for. So that's awesome. My brother Conrad will be back. So Conrad, Crystal, and Renzi will be back. And the subject on August 31st on the YouTube channel of Hubbard Wrestling Media, the crappy storyline writing of WWE. Anyway, that's 
August 31st. We have a long way to go between now and then. Next week, meet us back here, 6.05 Eastern Standard Time for episode 51 of Clash of the Podcast. That is my brother, Conrad. I'm your man, Sean. This is Clash of the Podcast. And always remember, be encouraged and evil never prevails. We'll talk to you next time.